Hi everybody, welcome to the video manual for the MRB Laboratory Vector Processor. So what does the Vector Processor do? Well, vector Processor enables you to do vector synthesis. And what's vector synthesis? Well, vector synthesis is a synthesis method by which sounds evolve and change over time by crossfading from one sound to another, to another, to another. This is usually accomplished in wavetable oscillators through the use of crossfading from one stored wavetable to another, and there are wavetable libraries inside the oscillator, but you're limited to what's in there, what's in the library. What the laboratory vector processor now allows you to do is crossfade between up to eight different sounds, and those sounds can be anything you want them to be. So let's get started. Uh, what's in the vector processor? Well, you can see here we've got eight different inputs with eight different level controls. You can balance things out. And let's get started. Let's patch something simple in, and we can hear what's going on. So I brought in the laboratory noise module. We'll take the pink noise source and we'll just plug it into one of the wave, waveform inputs, turn it up a bit, and plug the mix output into the audio output. And let's see if we can hear it. Now turning the offset control moves what we hear up and down the different inputs. So this is uh, simply a wave scanner just used in this way, but we'll see how we can make it into a uh, vector synthesis module in a moment. So we turn this and you can see the different windows opening and, and you could hear that noise going by. Let's turn it down a bit. And there it is. Uh, let's bring in something else. Okay, I brought in an oscillator. Let's disconnect the noise temporarily and we'll turn up each of the waveforms here and we'll try to scan between the different waveforms. So we'll put the saw here, and the square here, and the triangle here, and the sine wave here. And as we turn the offset control, the offset it just controls the offset just controls which channel the module rests at without any control voltage. The control voltage makes things go up and down. We'll see that in a second. So let's uh, scan through the different waveforms. First, let's turn them up a bit so we can hear them. These controls are real handy for getting things balanced. So when you scan through the waveforms, nothing sticks out too much. Or if you want something to accent, you can just turn it up more. You can dial in that balance however you like. So you could hear how it's scanned between the different waveforms. We can hear that that's saw wave and the square wave is a little loud. I could turn them down here too. I'm going to bring in a, uh, let's bring in the mini LFO and we'll have some fun. There it is. We'll add the mini LFO and we'll plug the triangle wave into the control voltage, turn it up and you can see how now So you can see these uh, blue meters. The blue meters don't show audio. The blue meters show how the different, you can think of these as windows. You can, and uh, the meters indicate how wide a window is open and each meter has 30 dB of range. So let's turn this back down. And as we move through, you can see how each window opens. Let's turn up the So how can we use this to do vector synthesis? Well, it's pretty easy. I'm going to bring in a, an envelope generator. Uh, let's find the velocity envelope. And I'm going to put the ADSR on the input. And turn the offset down. You can see how the offset can go beyond the end, so we don't hear anything. It can also go beyond the end at the top. So we'll just put it just off the end so you don't hear anything. And then when we hit a key, or we'll just fire the envelope. Let's turn this down, a little bit of decay. And when 
up a little too high. We can control how high it goes this way. Instant vector synthesis. Nothing could be easier. Let's make that a little louder at the top. Now to tune where the envelope winds up, it's pretty easy to do. You can just use the sustain control on the envelope. If I hit a key, if I turn the sustain control, that takes me up to the very top of the envelope. Now I'm going to patch in some white noise into the fifth stage here, and I want it to go a little high so I can hit that, hit that white noise there at the very top of the envelope. So I have the sustain turned up all the way, and I just put in a little more control voltage, and I dial it in that far. So now, I get a little burst of noise at the top. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, so let's go over the rest of the controls. The width controls how wide this window is that uh, is scanning up and down. You so you can see I've got a little more than one channel's worth here. And if I turn down the width, I can just capture one of those channels as I move up and down. And the plus and minus slope controls control how much of the adjacent windows come through. So if I have a very steep slope, you can hear it's very strict and we only get the one piece coming through. And if I make the slope quite shallow, you get a lot of leakage into the adjacent channels. It's also possible to have no slope. If I do that, I can have a bar that brings in everything from the, everything from the bottom if I have no negative slope. And if I have no positive slope, a bar that brings in everything from the top. So there's lots of, lots of modes that you can bring in. We'll just put that to the average amount. You also have individual outputs. When the window opens, you'll get audio out just from that one channel. Let's demonstrate that. And you also get a control voltage out. In other words, this is, these are really eight VCAs. These eight outputs are the control voltage outs for the eight VCAs, the eight internal VCAs that are in the module. So you can use that to control other things. For instance, let's say I want to open a filter or something like that when this channel is activated. And let's try doing that. Okay, so I've patched a VCF to the square wave input on its way into channel three of the vector processor. And on channel three, I'm gonna take the control voltage and use that to control the filter. And we'll hear what that does, I hope. You can hear that filter open up a bit. Let's turn up the control voltage a little more. So you can use the control voltage outs to do anything you want. You can process individual outs any way you want.
So here I've combined the LFO with the envelope. Turn the offset down a bit. If I make the envelope dynamic, let's plug the velocity in. That's pretty much all there is to the module. It's very easy to use. Oh, let's go over the clamp control here. Sometimes you don't want it to go over the end. Let's say I've got this running. Slow this down a bit. And you can see I'm getting silence at the bottom. If I clamp the negative, it will never run off the end. Same with the positive. It'll never run off the top if I have the top clamp on. So there you go. That should get you up and running on the vector processor. Put in some crazy sounds into the input. Scan between them. Put an envelope on the CV. Hit a key. And it'll cross pan between all of the different sounds that you've got in there. All right. Well, here's a patch that come up with and using the polyphonic version of the vector processor. We'll go over it real quick. I've got a VCO here and a VCO here and another poly VCO here uh, providing polyphonic vibrato. It's down here in the LFO range. So I got this on eight foot and I got this on two foot. So the eight foot one is going in on the lower four and I've got the two foot two octaves above going in on the on the next few and I got white noise converted to polyphonic through the mini on a poly module and that's going in on the top. I also have the dynamic envelope dialed in. Let's get rid of the patch cord so we can see things easier. So I've got the dynamics dialed in so when I hit harder I get a bigger envelope and that will send this up a little harder. It's kind of like that carnival game where you hit that puck with the hammer and try to ring the bell at the top. So let's see what happens. I'll play quietly and I get just a little little bit. I'll play harder. I'll go all the way to the top. And you can hear it vectoring all up and down. Instead of it just scanning there with a little bit of leakage between each two, between the adjacent windows, let's turn the minus slope down all the way and you'll see what happens now. Turn this down a bit. And you see it's a lot more like that carnival game where they'll all come in and then they'll all disappear in order. going to wrap it up for the video manual on the mono and poly versions of the MRB vector processor. This module is a lot of fun. You can leverage this module into sounding like you're using a lot more modules than you really are. Sounds like you're using a whole bunch of envelope generators and VCAs, maybe a sequencer and all that other stuff when you're really just using a few modules in the vector processor. And you'll find that's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to hearing what you guys do with this and uh, looking forward to any feedback you might have on this module. There's going to be a lot more video manuals to come. Don't want anybody in the dark, don't want anybody confused. Also, please feel free to email me or comment, ask any questions you like, and I will re rapidly respond. All right, so until the next time, happy synthesizing. Bye-bye.